Hi everyone, it's Will from Anastasia Island Library. We're here for another homeschool history, and today we're going to be doing assembly lines. Now, assembly lines is a more fun way of saying the Industrial Revolution. Um, not that assembly lines were the only thing that happened in the Industrial Revolution, but they are a big part of what made the Industrial Revolution such a big deal. So, let's go over what an assembly line is. It's a manufacturing process with interchangeable parts. Goods are moved mechanically from station to station and workers perform the same task over and over and over again. So let's say you work for a car manufacturer and your job is to attach the steering wheel. You're gonna attach the steering wheel over and over and over again every day. That's your job. Uh, let's say you work at a candy factory and your job is to place, I don't know, milk duds on a pan. That's going to be your job. You do the same task over and over and over again. And that's what makes production so fast with assembly lines. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the Industrial Revolution started around 1760. Before Industrial Revolution, goods were made by hand and skilled craftsmen. So have you ever made anything by hand? Um, it usually takes a little bit longer than getting something that's made out of a factory, right? So, you know, anything from furniture to wagons to wagon wheels to things you needed, even some of the nails you needed for your house were all made by hand until the Industrial Revolution figured out how to mass produce these items, which led to an increase in production of goods, um, which in turn, in some cases, helped bring prices down so more people could afford them. But the first um, places that we see this uh, adopted is Portsmouth Block Mills, um, is an early example of the assembly line process in 1801 to 1803. And this right here is an artist rendition of what that looked like. So it's important to remember the Industrial Revolution started before electricity and before photography. So you can see drawings and lithographs and paintings of the Industrial Revolution. And later on, you see pictures of people in mills as opposed to drawings. Um, you go from steam and gas powered and eventually to electricity. The first mills to adopt the new production methods are textile mills. So a textile mill makes cloth, um, and that can be any kind of cloth. They can make blankets, they can make t-shirts, pants, anything that has to do with cloth, they're going to make it. So the fact that they were able to quickly produce cloth meant that different types of cloth were more readily available to the masses. So right here is a list of all the industries, and there's a lot more um, that benefited in some way to the Industrial Revolution and assembly line processing for manufacturing products. One over textiles, mining, um, being able to get the ore or whatever it is they're mining from point A to point B, um, being able to make that into a finished product a lot quicker. Paper, um, you know, I live near a paper mill now. And without that mill, paper took a long time to make by hand. Agriculture, so you had easier ways to plant and plow and harvest with machines as opposed to by hand or something drawn by a horse. Um, gas lighting, so before electricity, we had gas lighting and allowed businesses and factories to stay open later. And the later they can stay open, the more product they can produce. Um, creation of Portland cement. So we've all seen cement, right? We have sidewalks, it might be in your driveway if you have one. Um, this wasn't something easily made before the Industrial Revolution and look at how much cement we use now. Um, and travel is a big one. It led to railroads and new ships, better roads, because now you can create these products um, that need to be shipped, so you need the infrastructure to get there. Um, Think about the Transcontinental Railroad here in the United States. Without the Industrial Revolution, that railroad would have taken a lot longer to build. There wouldn't have been the, the need, you know, someone traveling across the United States to move either from the East Coast to California wasn't as big of a deal as a company needing to ship its products across this, the country. So workers, who worked in these, these mills? Um, I think 
a lot of us would assume that they were primarily adults. This picture here has some, they're working in a car factory, and we can see that they're primarily men. Um, but that's not always the case. Women worked in a lot of factories. Um, that somewhat ebbed and flowed depending on whether or not the nation was at war. So for instance, in World War II, a lot of women entered the factories because the men had to go off and fight. Um, but certain factories also preferred men or even, excuse me, preferred women hmm, or even children to labor. So children early on were preferred over adults, um, primarily because they could be paid less. Um, according to a lot of the employers at the time, children did not need um, the same wages that an adult needed. Their small hands and fingers were better able to operate a lot of the machinery that was needed. Um, because even though we have machinery now, it's not quite automated in the same way, so you still needed that human input in order to make it go, or you have these children right here um, weeding uh, onto spools. Um, kids sometimes as young as five and six were help, forced to help support their families because companies could pay children less. They liked to hire children over adults, which means more and more kids had to be hired in order for families to feed themselves. Now, as you can see with these pictures right here, um, the kids are dirty from working in factories. Um, their clothes are a little raggedy because it, you just get dirty in a factory. But these are also lower income families. Um, a lot of these were immigrant families um, who fell in the lower social classes of the United States and elsewhere. The United States is not the only place that had Industrial Revolution. Britain had one as well. Most of Western civilization did. Um, you don't see upper class uh, families working in factories. They may own the factory. They may be the employer to these people. Um, but they certainly didn't work in it like these families did. So the biggest, probably, I would say most famous, at least within the U.S. example of an assembly line, is because of Henry Ford. Um, he was not, again, the first person to use it, but he was the person to make it famous. He was like, hey, we have this thing called a car, and these cars are available to people who are super rich, um, who have the money to, to afford it, because every car before this time was made by hand. What if we could adopt this assembly line to mass produce cars so that everyone or more people at least could afford a vehicle? So this is his Model T. Um, there was the joke that he made that it came in any color as long as you wanted black. So his assembly line made cars more available to more people. It was no longer just a luxury item for the super wealthy. So, these home school histories, we always have an activity, right? And obviously, I prefer to do these in person with you. Um, they're a lot more fun that way, but I also want you to have fun at home with your families. So, these are the materials that I used for our candy car factory. So, if you want to follow this, this is great. Um, if, if you're unable to get some of the candy, that's okay, too. Um, maybe you have Legos at home, maybe you have other ideas on how to make a car. Um, so the important thing is to remember, let me show you, these are just materials, let me show you the instructions here. So these are the instructions on how to actually build your candy car. If you want to use something else again, great. I encourage you to use your imagination to find things at home if you don't have the candy to do this, to still be able to have a fun activity with your family. So you got to be able to make at least more than one vehicle, okay? And then you got to decide who in your family is going to have what job. So let's say your job is putting on the wheels. That's going to be your job over and over again. And maybe you have one of your adults put on the steering wheel. Um, maybe you have a brother or sister or a cousin that lives with you or grandma or grandpa, and you want them to put on the seat of your car. Um, just make sure everyone does the same job over and over and over again, and see how long it takes you to get through this assembly line. Um, again, I encourage you, and I can go back one for any of the adults out there who want to actually do the candy, but I also encourage you to find different ways. It doesn't have to be a car. 
It can be anything that you can think of um, and just work together to make this completed item. And hopefully um, sometime soon I get to see you in person and we can do this together as a big group. Until then, um, I'll see you next week with another history and have fun.